What's up guys, D2 from D2AOV.com here with the new patch, the translation of the patch that hit the Taiwan server on May 21st, that is yesterday, if you are in East Asia, which I am, and so I was able to write about that, I have provided some commentary, and we're going to go over that right now as well. So, uh, overall, the patch balanced 11 heroes and 5 items, and had a couple of overall battlefield changes. It's kind of a medium-sized patch if you can compare it to patches in the past. I think some of the most more recent ones were massive changes that we've seen. Now, there was a smaller patch that hit Taiwan in April that balanced Xenial, Emily, Timmy, Caffany, and Florentino. So if this patch does indeed make its way to other servers, servers excuse me, then you will see both of those patches combined into one. So keep in mind, if this patch comes west, you'll see that these five heroes will be changed uh, in addition to what's going on with this patch. So, let's get on to it. Um, first of all, there's a new 10v10 mode. Um, looks cool. There's a new battlefield. Uh, you can <clears throat> unlock powered-up abilities, which look pretty cool. They're just, like, basically, just go click on this video. There's um, quite a few, like, crazy abilities that you can get uh, by the use of star coins. Um, I think there was a video where... Someone put it up, and it was like in Vietnamese or Chinese or something like that, and people thought it was just a, an extra rune system uh, that was going to be replacing Arcana. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's just a bunk rumor. I think people just saw it. It looked like runes, and they got confused. Um, but I think that that system is only for 10v10, and we're not going to be seeing runes anytime soon. Obviously, I could be wrong. But I, it doesn't seem to be the case that they're replacing Arcana with runes or adding runes to the game. By the way, just ignore these ads on my site. Uh, I have ads randomly pop up on all my articles. Got to pay the bills somehow, right? So uh, just ignore that. Uh, next, general changes. So now you can kind of select two of your positions before you head into a ranked game. Whether it's, you know, Dragon, Lane, Slayer, Lane, Mid, Jungle, or Support. Uh, you can select two. Um... Or you could just pick everything uh, if you want to have a faster queue time. Obviously, in Taiwan, the queue times are extremely short, so this is you know a, a good place to have this option to do so. I don't know how viable it will be in the West. I'm not sure if they're going to be implementing this in the West for the the issues of queue times, particularly in North America when they can be pretty long. Uh, this particular translation I wasn't super sure about. It basically said Diamond Wall One, Diamond Wall Two, and Diamond Wall Three. The, the first wall, the second wall, the third wall. I even asked like my um. My friend from Hong Kong who's who can read Chinese and she's like, I don't know what the heck they're talking about there. So I'm just I'm guessing it's a diamond one through three, but it might not even matter. Uh, this even if this system comes to the West, they might change who it's applied to. Um, I highly doubt it's gonna be like a seven to eleven PM thing daily. That's like uh, Taiwan does that from time to time when they have things open in a certain time frame, which is pretty interesting to think about, but I've never seen that in the West. So even if this comes west, these last two parts uh, might not make it. <clears throat> and then um, Adding friends, I, I noticed a couple things playing on the Taiwan server, like they kind of give you, when you play a game now, they show you, oh, do you want to friend request this person? They played pretty well, just like you did. Uh, and apparently there's also a bubble prompt. Um, there's a couple more things where you can like write the note name, like if you're talking to your friend, you can like label the conversation and you can you know their loca location information. I don't know if that's coming to other servers, but I don't know. It's a thing that uh, went to Taiwan. A couple other changes too that I wasn't really sure about. I think they were only Taiwan uh, only. Okay, let's move on to the battlefield changes. So first of all, the buff from the Abyssal Dragon has been nerfed to this number. Now this number is just wrong. <laughs> And uh, when when I tested the old numbers, which was like 170 plus something plus, you know, plus I think it was like 0.8 additional attack damage. Like those were way off too. I don't know what's going on with the, like the co communication between the devs and the patch notes writers, but like it wasn't even close. And I wasn't going to sit there and just calculate a, a random buff. It, basically, um, the current one on other servers and the old one, if you're on Taiwan, it did about like 70 damage and it scaled like... To like 0.4 or so additional attack damage. And then the new one is like the same additional attack damage scaling, but it starts at like 40 damage. It's really not even close, but they did nerf it. <laughs> the point is they ba they basically nerfed it to the same scale as they wrote in the... Uh, or like, I should say, so the amount that they nerfed it 
is like consistent if you just scaled on the numbers, <laughs> right? So like they basically nerfed it in half um, with the fake numbers that they gave. And in reality, it's also about half, but the, the numbers are just different. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how, how they messed it up twice in a row. I don't understand like why they, where these numbers come from. But it, to be fair, it is based on this initial damage and uh, damage per level and then damage per ability power and additional attack damage. Just the numbers themselves are completely wrong. Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh yeah, I should mention that in the dev notes, the developers notes in the uh, Taiwanese patch notes are like, oh, well, the people who got the first dragon kind of just, you know, snowballed the game and they had a higher win percentage than we wanted, so we tuned them. <clears throat> so, which brings us to the Abyssal Dragon and Dark Slayer. So, they uh, increased the base damage, uh, they increased the base defense, they lowered the experience from getting a Slayer, and they lowered the gold, um, which is fine with me. Part of the reason why you get the Dark Slayer is so you can snowball the game with the abilities that you get from it, not necessarily from the actual, you know, experience and gold that you get from it. And they changed um, the amount of damage that the Slayer does with its AoE abilities. And those abilities are like when he takes both of his hands and slams them to the ground and knocks everyone up. And then the other one is like the little flurry thing around him that it, that damages everyone. So that, that damage goes up. And they also increased the armor reduction to 40% from a flat 210, which is a really big deal if you're a tank. Flat, like 210 is like maybe, it's like 20%, but it can be as low as like 10% or no, like, like 15% if you have a ton of armor. Uh, whereas now it's 40%, it's massive. So it's a lot harder for a tank to just sit there and take the damage while your ally takes it. It also makes it a lot easier for someone to just jump in because you're gonna have basically a Muramasa effect on you uh, if the other team tries to contest it. So you can't just easily just grab the Dark Slayer. The other team can just jump in and try to contest it even if they're behind. Um, and then the damage reduction uh, is increased to 60%. So you're only doing 40% damage. It used to be that it reduced by 40% so that you still did 60% damage. So you really cannot be taking damage as a primary damage dealer to the Slayer. That was always the case before. If you want to, it's best to take it as a, as a duo and have one, the tank tank the damage so that you don't get uh, your damage <laughs> nerfed essentially. And so that you can, you know, deal the proper damage and kill it, but it makes it, so it's way, way, way harder to kill it solo. If you're one of the heroes that can take it solo. I haven't really tested the heroes that can t take it slow to see uh, if they can do so. They probably still can, considering the ones who can are the ones who have like a ton of life still anyway. Uh, but if you're thinking about like you know heroes like Quillen is going to be a bit harder, uh, like Kricknax is going to be a bit harder because they they really re rely on bursting it down rather than sustaining through it all, like something like a Killgroth or something like that. Um, so uh, and the AOE abilities, I actually didn't know this, but the AOE abilities didn't reduce your armor by anything. Um, so that's interesting to note. And now they do by 120. Now the funny thing is, is that in AOV, when you reduce something by a percent, or when you basically when you add up uh, a raw number and a percentage, the raw number always comes first. So in this case. You get reduced by 120, then 40%. So in, in the end, it ends up just, just being 72 armor that you lose if you get hit by both of them. Which is... It's like not that rare, but the the com the cumulative effect is only going to be there for like half a second. Because he has to immediately hit with like a punch and then like an AoE effect. So not that big of a deal, but um, just uh, something to keep in mind. <laughs> the most you can get reduced is uh, 40% plus 72. Let's move on to the Drake. Now, this was very... This is bizarre to me. I don't even know what's going on, to be completely honest with you. Um, like, the exper I'm guessing this is the, this experience in gold. And by the way, th this, this is what they say in the patch notes. There's no, there's no like, actual explanation. It's just like, oh, here's some numbers. Then they throw it out your face. Um, so, the experience from killing it, I guess? So, they're basically rewarding the team that's behind for killing it. Um, and... I don't know. It's very weird. Uh, HP increase goes... Uh, that, you know, the incremental HP increase is lower than it was and the tower damage is lower than it was but it scales higher but the thing is when i was testing it to be fair when i was testing it i was in training mode and you have to kind of sit there for forever and wait for and make sure that your your team doesn't die and you have to have minions running the entire time or else if you reset the minions and it starts from zero again so you have to sit there and constantly check it and make sure that like neither side's towers are dying 
Um, it's very, very frustrating. So I, my numbers might have been off, but at least in training mode, uh, the attack damage starts at 600 and increases by 12 at the beginning and starts increasing by 24 a few minutes in. Um, and that, that those increases come like every 30 seconds or so. So it's very, very hard to get to like the 1800 attack necessary for this to um, overtake this. And the reason why, and the reason why I say that is because the de the devs or the developers' notes don't say, "Oh, we wanted to just nerf it." They said we wanted to uh, make sure it wasn't as strong early, but that would be still be really strong late. And yet, it takes a long, long time for this to be this to overtake this number. So I'm very confused as to all of these numbers and what they're trying to do. Um, I honestly think there is a bit of a a bit of a, a miscommunication, <laughs> disconnect between the the developers and the patch notes writers, and I'm talking about the actual Taiwanese uh, patch notes writer. I'm not I mean, not even talking about like the Western patch notes writers, where they kind of just probably just send an email and like, oh, here you go. <laughs> but um, anyway, I don't know what's going on here, but this, the drag is a lot weaker, I guess. Uh, other changes: extra gold for last hitting minions, forty percent, thirty percent. Um, this makes it easier for newer players, I suppose, but I don't like uh, reducing the skill by that much. I guess it's kind of can just, be, can just be unfortunate if you're not there in time, but or you you can't something unfortunate happens you can't get the last hit. But um, I really like the the dual system of being able to soak mini ways, but also like having to last hit them and having that extra incentive in the early game. It also prevents you from just you know damaging the opponent and that's perfectly fine instead of like actually focusing on the minions as well there's like a you know a mini game going on there um i guess it's still fine because 30 percent is still a big deal but meh. um the time was in the first, first four minutes were shortened they didn't say how much they were shortened there weren't actually any like concrete numbers i don't know how impactful that's gonna be but i guess they're just, they don't want to be snowballing games like really really quickly anymore uh, Abyssal Dragon buff duration, I just, they, this has gone all over the place. It used to be like 60 seconds, and then went to 90 seconds, and then went to 3 minutes, and now it's back to 2 minutes again. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I, they can't make that in mind. Um, I just wish the Abyssal Dragon came up before 15 minutes, because it's a freaking eternity. Um, and then, again, minion movement speed increases, change from, this used to be, um, like, it starts at 6, it used to start at like 6 minutes, I believe, and then they change it to 9, 14, 18, 22, and now it's 9, 12, 15, 18. Actually, you know what? I think the patch notes writer made a mistake. Now that I'm looking at this, look, it goes every four minutes, and I'm pretty sure when I looked at an old patch, it was 10, 14, 18, 22. So I think that's just a typo um, in the patch notes. In fact, I'm going to go look at it right now. Maybe, I hope it's not a typo on my part. Um, oh, it is a typo on my part. My bad. Okay, here I am uh, complaining about the typos from the devs, devs when it's actually type on my part. So, okay, type on my part. It is uh, 10, 14, 18, 22. And uh, that goes to 9, 12, 15, and 18. So the minion movement speed increases. We'll make sure that the game uh, speeds up and goes faster and you can win easier, but it's not necessarily going to be a snowball because if you're defending, that means you get your gold anyway. And yeah, so they're, they're kind of trying to balance like that's not going to unfairly snowball, but the game will still go faster. Um, anyway, let's move on to item changes. Um, starting with Omni Arms, this is just seems like an oversight. So if you look at Arcane Hammer, uh, Arcane Hammer was is an item that allows has this passive called Speed Up, um, and it's literally the only the only thing that it builds into is Omni Arms. It doesn't build any of the other uh, item, so I think this is kind of an oversight on the uh, the developers' part. They didn't notice this because I think if it if it uh, built into other items, they would have noticed this discrepancy. But because it only built it into Omni Arms, it took them a while. But uh, yeah, so there's this thing called speed up when you, your normal attacks increase movement speed by ten percent, and so they added that passive to Omni Arms. But in order to add that passive, they needed to uh, take away something else. Right, so they took a little bit of a max HP away, and it took a little bit of uh, life steal away as well. So, which is a fair trade, in my opinion. Now, Omni Arms is even more multidimensional. It basically has five different stats to this buffing and two uh, different passives <laughs> that'll help you up, uh, help you out. Um, 
Uh, keep in mind, though, that I, I saw a post on Reddit where it was like, oh my god, it's going to be insane. Every single attack increased by 10% your movement speed. No, it, it's, it's just 10%. It doesn't stack. So it's not going to be as insane as uh, that post mentioned. Anyway, uh, moving on to Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver gets a nerf. Uh, they significantly reduce the damage from the Soul Taker passive. Uh, in return, they increase the damage by <laughs> the attack damage by a tiny, tiny amount, and they reduce the cooldown by a not insignificant amount. This will make uh, an okay difference. Um, this is also a pretty big nerf as well. The extra damage to heroes, or not not a big nerf, but like it's still like this. This overweighs this by quite a bit. Um, so I suppose I mean you could say that the assassins were getting kind of out of control. Uh, this is probably a good nerf overall. Uh, particular because, you know, burst assassins are all the rage and it can make the game seem a little bit unfair. They still maintain a bit of damage, they can still burst people down and they get their this cooldown, or they get this passive up more often, but you're not just going to completely destroy someone like you could before, especially with magic damage, which was, you know, seen as potentially unfair, especially if you're demolishing supports who haven't built their magic damage yet and you're, like, just completely running away with the game. So, I am fine with it. Let's move on to Hercules Madness. So, uh, there was a bit of confusion um, because when people looked at the Google Translate of the change on the passive, it said something like um, the lifesteal removed from remote heroes. And then just, they just kind of ignored the part that said remote because they didn't understand what it, what they meant by that but by remote they meant range so this is only removed from range heroes and range heroes still have desticle um they still can use you know blade of eternity so range heroes will be fine it was kind of weird that they turn hercules madness into a thing that range heroes could use in the first place so yeah this is not that big of a deal you can still use it on your bruisers speaking of bruisers they like to build hercules madness pretty early uh it used to be an item before the change that uh, people would build you know fifth or sixth just to make sure they have that panic shield uh but because of the extra life steal, people were building it really really early especially for people in the ds lane so i think that reducing this armor will uh will help in that regard, right? You can't just build early and have and uh, kind of get away with it because you're going to be missing those important attributes. Um, now it's, you know, strictly a situational item and not an item that you get like every single time, which uh, I'm in agreement with. All right. Scorching Wind. Um, so there's a minimum trigger interval of 0.3 seconds. It's the exact same thing that they did to Shuriken and Fafnir's Talon two patches ago. Um, at the time, I was like, why are they nerfing, like, specifically Yorn? Because he's the only one who can get the passive off faster than 0.3 seconds. But it turns out they were preparing for Hayate coming in. Uh, because Hayate could just proc it with his, uh, Shuriken. Uh, or his, sorry, his Shuriken, uh, ability, not the actual Shuriken, uh, item. Um, but they overlooked the fact that Hayate can be a good jungler, especially if you give him support in the early game and allow him to clear. Uh, I'm pretty sure they reduced the damage on his punish already, so they're really trying to make sure that Hayate can't jungle. He still can jungle, but it won't be quite as ridiculous. Um, you won't be getting both the insane attack speed from Scorching Wind and the the Firestorm passive that just demolishes people because of his shooting gun. So this is definitely necessary, and it's only a thing that affects Yorn and Hayate, and really only Hayate because Yorn doesn't really jungle all that often. Uh, lastly, for the items, we have Waterstone, and the only change here is that instead of you and the closest ally get 30 gold and 40 experience, you get a little bit lo less gold and a little bit less experience, which makes sense if you're support. You shouldn't be just, like, piling up all the gold in the world just by being in a dual lane. Uh, you still help your ally, you know, enough, um, so this is, you know, this is a reasonable nerf. C keep in mind that... This is not really that big of a deal if you think about it, because uh, first of all, you're the support, so you don't need gold as much. And second of all, stacks come up every thirty seconds. So even if you're, even if you're constantly gaining 
the stacks by being near exactly being near an ally uh, and near a winning wave and not missing any of those stacks coming by and, and expending them all, it's still only 20 gold a minute extra. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but certainly they need to tone down at least a little bit, especially because if you consider uh, how ridiculous heroes like Timmy had become in uh, farming their entire team. <clears throat> okay, let me take a drink of water and we'll get to two of the hero changes. All right, so um, I've been doing this for the uh, past few patches where I give heroes a rating, um, <clears throat> ranging from completely nerfed into oblivion uh, to completely broken from now on. I haven't given any hero, any hero a five or negative five. I rarely give them a four or negative four. Uh, in fact, ne negative fours almost like never happen because as we'll see in a moment uh, here with the change they made to the Hayate, they never really nerf heroes very hard. Uh, even if they're super overpowered, they like to give them like a, a slap on the wrist because you, what you don't want to do as a developer, and this is what I've learned from like kind of really paying attention to how Tencent have done things, and also having paying attention to other games as well, is that if you nerf someone too hard, then you end up having to buff them up again, and then it causes it just the game's in, always in flux, and um, you end up having to undo changes that. Uh, you figured were mistakes, but you can't. You don't want to admit your mistakes, so you make like different like, mechanical changes. There's actually a couple of heroes, I, like I think it's uh, Varus and Quillen, where they actually just undid some of the mistakes that they did before, or un undid some of the changes that they did before, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, but if it's like if it's like a negative one or zero or one, it's not really going to make a whole lot of difference in the world. Just basically continue along your day as normal. <clears throat> so let's start with Fennec. So. Oh boy, Fennec. Um, <laughs> I, uh, what do I start? Okay, okay, let's just go through the actual um, abilities. And I should have a video running over this so that I can show you guys how this all works. But starting off with uh, his passive. So his passive used to do extra damage to nearby... Basically, it's splash damage to nearby minions and monsters, which is like kind of a dumb passive, especially because the whole point of Fennec is to jungle. So the fact that he just deals extra damage to me, like no one cares. It's just no one cares. It just, like barely made any difference in the game. Now he deals extra damage uh, every third attack, and it can hit um, heroes as well. So it does additional forty percent damage both to the target and all nearby enemies. So it's like an, so the target itself takes one hundred forty percent damage, and then nearby enemies take forty percent damage. Um, minions and monsters, and also this this his towers. Uh, minions and monsters take 75% more damage from the explosion. Um, all that means is, you know, 75% of 40% is 30%. So therefore, uh, minions and monsters take 70% uh, physical damage um, in the explosion. Uh, and also, this damage can critically strike. Not only can it critically strike, but when you go look um, at the new ability description, and indeed, if you test it for yourself, all ability, uh, all all item abilities and special effects proc to, and that's nuts. So if you have like Fafnir's Talon, and it explodes on something, then it will. And if you explode your passive on someone, then it does all the all the, you know the percent of you're like eight percent. I think it's eight percent. Yeah, eight percent of the max HP damage to everyone. So all of a sudden, Fafnir's Town is a ridiculous item on Fennec. Um, I guess one thing I should mention now is that this seems very, very much like Slims. Like when I first started reading, I'm like, reading this, I'm like, they just gave him Slims' his passive because if you don't know, Slims' his third attack basically is the same thing as like an AOE, um, and it can critically strike and does extra damage. But where this is different is that his passive is applied to heroes with the spark um, and rolling lightning also applies a passive to people with these marks so this gets out of control very very quickly this this, this passive so uh, keep in mind what this does basically it's, it's an explosion and explodes for a certain amount of damage um, and the extra damage can quickly strike uh, one thing i should mention here is that in the new taiwan ability description it says that uh, it it benefits from lifesteal as well that is only half true. The extra damage on the target itself will give you 
extra life deal, not the explosion damage. So if you explode 40% damage on someone uh, next to them, you won't get that life steal. You only get the life steal from the explosion damage on the primary target. So keep that in mind. You're not gonna you're not gonna just life steal AOE life steal on like the entire freaking team and and uh, go back to full. It's only on the primary target. It's still something. It's still extra life steal, but it's not uh, it's not as nuts as you might think it would be. Um, if you go to the uh, patch notes themselves, there's this random asterisk at the end, and it says 2.5 meter uh, radius, 50% explosion damage, 7.5 range, and just literally no context. Like it's just like they explain the ability, and then they're like, "Here's some numbers," and <laughs> I literally have no idea what the heck they're trying to explain. Um, I could be fluent in Chinese and I would have, and this, there's just no context, literally there's no context, so I don't know what the 50% explosion damage means, um, I tried testing it, I tried to think of what could possibly be 50% explosion, I have no idea, it's, I've tried, no idea what they're trying to say there, so maybe it have something to do with like 50% to heroes, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe it comes up if you guys if you guys figure it out if you guys test it on the Taiwan server and you can figure it out let me know but I could not figure it out for the life of me anyway uh, let's move on passive is nuts so uh, thieves mark <clears throat> so the looking at thieves mark so this is the same again uh, this amount of attack speed that's the same uh, can be a building that's the same um, uh, every attack on the target um, adds a stack that part's the same but the big thing here is it triggers Fennec's passive. And if you apply Thief's Mark to someone, Fennec will automatically start attacking that person. If there are other people nearby, it doesn't matter what your settings are, he will uh, focus that person, which is good because you want to have that AoE damage on everyone now that you now that it triggers Fennec's passive every single time. So to reiterate or to clear up any confusion, if you put Thieves Mark on someone and start attacking that person, they will explode for extra damage to everyone around them. So every single time you're in a fight and you apply Thieves Mark, you're doing AoE damage with every single attack. Now granted, it's only 40% physical damage, but like I mentioned earlier, if you have Fafnir's Talon, you're doing 8% of their remaining HP damage, as well as the extra 40%. And not only that, but you're, you're exploding on the person. Um, now, in return, the the mark doesn't blow up. There's not that ridiculous blow up damage at the end. Um, previously, when you know you know when uh, previously you would get hit with uh, Phoenix Thieves Mark and you're running away and there's like this and there's a freaking Thieves Mark around you and then your dumb ally would be like standing next to you. And you're like, no, go away, go away. Or maybe the opposite. Maybe they have a stack uh, the Thieves Mark on them and you're like, no, 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 go away, don't blow up on me. Um, now that's only relevant if Fennec is literally there attacking that person. If they're running away, uh, it's not going to blow up anymore for a bajillion damage. All it's going to do is uh, stun them for 0.25 to 1 second, depending on how many stacks there are. Um, so if you do not manage to attack them at all, it will not stun them. The, the mark will just go away. So um, yeah, one, one stack equals 0.25 seconds, etc. etc. Et <clears throat> so... Uh, if, however, you do manage to land four stacks, it does blow up, or it, it does like, I think, yeah, it, it basically, it's only damage dealt to the target. Uh, it doesn't blow up, so it doesn't do AoE damage like it did before. Again, the attacks themselves blow up the passive and hurt you, but not the, not when the mark itself, like, detonates, quote-unquote. Um, so if you get four stacks, this amount of damage is dealt to the target. It's, it's quite a significant amount of damage, but it's not AoE damage. So, in the end, it's a lot more damage, it's a lot more consistent damage um, that Fennec does. You don't have to sit there and, and just attack the same person over and over again and hope that it kills them. Um, all your attacks do a lot of damage. And not only that, but once Fennec applies... It's, it's very similar to other marksmen nowadays, or now... Because when you're fighting someone, when you're fighting against a marksman, you can't just let the marksman sit there and fight and like attack you. Um, and now the same thing really, really goes for Fennec. If he's if he's sitting there attacking, he's doing AOE damage to everyone around there. So you got to deal very, very quickly. <clears throat> um, and 
Oh, I forgot to mention. There's so many. There's so many differences. Like I just I can't. I I stopped to explain something and I can't get to the next thing. Uh, so uh, if you manage to get four stacks on them, not only does it do this extra damage, but um, the cooldown of rolling lightning will reset. And this is massive, and it's more massive once we get to rolling lightning. Um, because rolling lightning procs the stacks as well. So it's really, okay, there's, there's so much synergy going on. They, they've really done a really good job of providing insane synergy. They, they turn Fennec into one, one of the most clunky heroes, from one of the most clunky heroes into one of the most like synergistic heroes with all of his abilities like combined together. It's really, really awesome. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Fennec can flip a short distance while casting, but not over walls. So basically, um, it's, it's kind of like, uh, like Raz's little shuffle thingy or Florentino's shuffle thingy. Basically, as your if you if you uh, apply a thieves mark to someone, like the, as you're casting it, you'll, you'll do do a little flip, and whatever direction you're pointing your joystick, you will flip in that direction. So if you start flipping in one direction, you can't stop yourself flipping in that direction. But it is a nice little like kind of dash thingy that can uh, help you catch up someone. And while you're flipping, you can animation cancel and use rolling lightning. Um, you can also use Chain Hammer Cyclone, but I think that's going to be... I mean, it's kind of just there that you can do. <laughs> just be, I don't, I, Being able to use Chain Hammer Cyclone isn't as big of a deal, but, you know, it's there if you want to use it. But most, like, 99% of the time, you're going to be animation canceling with Rolling Lightning, um, and we'll see why in just a moment. <clears throat> uh, other things, cooldown is reduced. Very nice, and mana cost is reduced as well, so that's cool. Okay, Rolling Lightning. Um, so it used to do initial damage, um, and it dealt damage, uh, on the ground every 0.25 seconds. Um, and it slowed movement speed by 50%. <clears throat> so, uh, there's no initial damage now, and the lightning on the ground deals a lot more damage, but only procs 0.5 seconds. Um, uh, and also, um, the, the movement speed reduction is not a flat 50, but it's, it's slower and goes 50. So, this is a nerf. This is a nerf. Um, this is a buff. But the big, big, big buff is that if a hero is tagged with Thieves Mark, every single like uh, proc of damage from this will trigger Fennec's passive. So it will blow up basically. So if you if you Thieves Mark someone and rolling lightning on top of them. Then it will blow everyone. It will blow everyone up around them, because it will every 0.5 seconds it will just have the explosion damage, and it adds a thief smart stack. So it's basically every single like damage from the ground is like you're attacking them, because so it blows them up, and it starts adding the thief smart stack. And remember, if you get the th stacks up high enough, then this will go off, and it will set the cooldown rolling lightning. So what you can do is you can apply Thief's Mark, animation cancel the Thief's Mark, jump into them. And by the way, this can be an entire team. Uh, if you if you do it properly, because you're immune to damage while you're... Um, oh, I didn't actually write this down, did I? Uh, you're immune to damage when you're using Rolling Lightning. That was, that was already part of the... Uh, that was already part of the ability description, but it's still there. You're, you're still immune. You're untargetable uh, when you use Rolling Lightning. So... You Thieves Mark, Animation Cancel into a Rolling Lightning. Even if there's like multiple heroes there, they all start taking a ton of AoE damage from the passive that's going off because you rolled over the hero with the Thieves Mark. And by the way, you can do this extremely quickly, and I'll show you uh, the clip in a moment. <clears throat> you do this extremely quickly, so it's very hard to dodge. Uh, and then everyone takes a bunch of AoE damage. Um, and, not, and the person then takes a bunch of damage, and then they get stunned, and then you can just Rolling Lightning out of there. So you Thief's Mark, Rolling Lightning, do a ton of damage, Rolling Lightning out. And by the way, um, there was another thing I noticed while uh, testing, uh, also so that's something that, that Azure uh, pointed out, is that there's no end lag to the ability. So um, the old version, he kind of did this extra somersault, uh, after the rolling lightning, which meant he kind of stood there for a tick, and that was bad, especially if you're trying to run away. But now he doesn't do that anymore. Uh, at the end, he just right when he right when he finishes his his rolling lightning, he gets up and walks away. So there's no end lag anymore. 
it's nuts. It's nuts. You get in there, thief smirk, rolling lightning, do a bunch of damage, stun them, do a bunch of AOE damage, and then you and then you rolling lightning away. And you can do that very, very often because this cool this cooldown is slower. Uh, this cooldown is lower, and it's your, it's part of your normal ability. It's not even part of your ultimate. Okay, speaking of the ultimate, the ultimate is the only thing that was not necessarily um, buffed. I would view it as a buff, but depending on how much you like uh, certain parts of the old one, uh, it can be viewed as just a rework or maybe even a nerf. So um, the damage went up a lot, uh, and it can critically strike for 50% extra damage now. So it's, it's very much like... It's extremely like uh, Wisp's Shock and All, actually, because uh, Shock and All has the same... Uh, crit capabilities <clears throat> for fifty percent damage. Um, however, you do not slow enemies anymore on the on the initial cast. Um, enemies in center don't take double damage anymore, and uh, it used to be that if you if someone had a thief mark on them, um, they would take stacks on it every 0.5 seconds. So basically, that was moved from the ultimate over to. The second ability, and I would I would say that's a really nice change for Fennec because not only uh, does it mean you don't have to use your ult when you're when you have your thief mark, and by the way, if you have your thief mark on someone and they're or and or they're in your chain hammer cycle and they're kind of already dead anyway, so it's it's really overkill. Whereas this is a very nice combo that you can pull off. Uh, but I digress. Um, yeah, the, the, this is all removed, so uh, that. Yeah, I don't know. You could argue that that uh, makes it worse, especially because you sometimes you like the extra slow. However, now you can recast the Chain Hammer Cyclone, and it will cause it to uh, return to Fennec's position. And by the way, it doesn't matter how far you are. You can you can throw a Chain Hammer Cyclone, run away, like basically off the screen to another location. Um, as long as you press it again within the six seconds, it will go all the way back to where you are. Um, and while it's going back, everything in its path is slowed by 50% for one second. So this slow is almost like objectively worse than this slow uh, because having the slow just on the actual ability itself is definitely superior. But you know, it's something they need. They couldn't make it ridiculous. They couldn't like if you kept the slow there, then it's probably just be ridiculously overpowered. Um, so yeah, for now. Just having it do a lot more damage and having the extra flexibility of being able to return it uh, is definitely good enough itself. Um, and in return, they did increase the uh, cooldown time. Uh, those who played Fennec before, you, you pretty much know that his cooldown was, or his ultimate was always off cooldown somehow. So this is a relatively welcome change. You don't, have, you can't just like throw it out willy nilly, or at least not as willy nilly as before. So that's all well and good. Uh, mana cost went down early game. It's still the same late game. This is, I don't know, it's mostly inconsequential, especially because he usually plays in the jungle. <clears throat> um, now, I want to show you a clip from my Twitter. By the way, follow me on Twitter, uh, which is pretty nuts here. So let's just start from the beginning. So you can see me. Uh, I use the my first ability. Immediately anima animation cancel into the two. Um, I get stunned up a, a bit by Thane, but that doesn't matter because the rolling lightning on the ground is proccing my passive on him. And by the way, we're both level 15 with no items, um, so it's a pretty fair fight. And so now you see that the the stacks have gone off, which allows me to, again, proc my second ability. He should have been stunned, but he uses... It's freaking Thane. He uses his first ability, so he wasn't able to be stunned there. Um, and then... Uh, I pop my ult here, uh, still able to fight him, and as and then because I'm in an offensive position, I use my ult to reposition it forward, and then I'm able to use my one again. This time I screw up. Um, you saw there that was a screw up because uh, you can flip for flip in any direction, but I accidentally flipped backwards in that instance, uh, which made me go farther away from him, and then I'm able to uh, finish him up in the end. But it just it's so ridiculous all of the new synergies that you have uh, with Fennec now. <clears throat> Whew, okay, that was uh, that was a lot of a lot of talking. Um, okay, <laughs> so in the end, I gave Fennec a four. That's the highest score I have given anyone since I started doing these balance changes. I think or balance change ratings. Um, I think the la the only other time I'd probably give someone a four would be like uh, Cricknack from like 
10 patches ago, I want to say, like a year and a half ago. But yeah, this is one of the biggest changes. And it's it's not just like they bumped his numbers, which wouldn't really dumb. Like if they just like, like, uh, if they just um, buffed his numbers to ridiculous levels, of course, he'd be a lot stronger. But this is so much cooler. It makes him so much more fun to play. And I absolutely love all the changes to Fennec. Uh, I'm like out of breath. So let me take a drink of water. <laughs> Okay, that part of Fennec will probably last as long as all the other heroes combined, <clears throat> and for good reason. Okay, so uh, Divine Light fixed a bug that causes the radius of Divine Light to be too wide. I'm not sure what they're talking about. I tried to test it. It seemed like the same exact width, so I'm not sure what they're referring to them. Um, they <clears throat> they lowered the stun from the enhanced Divine Light from 1 second to 0.75 seconds. Not a huge deal. Uh, it, I mean, 0.25 seconds is not very long, obviously, but it is an ability that you can spam out almost constantly like if you prepare your divine light uh you precast it then you um then after three seconds you can just do double divine light and sun someone up and then after that three seconds later you can do another enhanced divine light by using banish and then double divine light so you can have you, you're, you can constantly be stunning people um and if you combine your ultimate in there you can completely just demolish someone in one combo like you have prepared divine light you double divine light and then you ult, and then you use your second ability, which immediately... So you go, go, you go, you prepare your 1, and then you 1-1, one, one, and then you 3-2, and then you get your 1 back again, and then you can 1-1 one, one, once more after that, and you can completely um, stun-chain someone to uh, just to death from one combo. And I've done that uh, a few times, and I'm not even the best Illumia player. Uh, people may be wondering why they, they nerfed Illumia, even though she didn't seem that strong, but for what she does, uh, she was absolutely ridiculous. So um, in her little niche... Of being able to just be a stun machine, they made her a little bit weaker, um, and I think I'm I'm fine with that. She was she was pretty ridiculous, especially in in pros hands. Um, I would like to see her get something in exchange for this nerf, um, but you could argue she's gotten that in the past, right? Because she's had her old buffed and all that kind of jazz. So I think I'm okay with it, <clears throat> but um, it's something. It's it's not the. It's not the craziest thing in the world, but I did give her minus one point five. Uh, keep in mind that like one is basically like not even not even like worth thinking about, and and two is like it's it's something but not really a big deal. So I gave her one point minus one point five, not the biggest deal in the world. <clears throat> Let's move on to Ormar. Ormar actually got a lot of changes. Uh, these numbers are just confusing though. Um, so in the developers' notes for Ormar, hold on, I need to like take another drink of water to like talk about this because this is like this is exasperating. <clears throat> one second. Okay, so um, in the developers' notes, um, they were very like wishy-washy. They're like, "Yeah, we want Armor to be good in in the support role, but also we want him to be able to play in the Slayer lane as well." And da, da, da. <laughs> and and yet, like all of these changes are supporting him more or are helping him more in support role and not helping him at all in the uh, Slayer lane. <clears throat> Everything now is just based on uh, having this energy. Um, of his of his HP, so this is based on his current HP. Um, his ultimates based on his current HP. Like everything, is just based on his current HP. So that's all they want to like focus on now. It seems. Um, the thing is, this magic damage it doesn't matter. So I wrote here. Um, it's it's increased by thirty five to forty five early game depending on your arcana and one hundred to one hundred fifty late game. But the thing is, if you are doing like one hundred fifty extra damage with this, then yeah, you're going to be doing, like, you know, a decent amount of damage with the Gut Punch, but you're doing literally, almost literally zero damage other than that because you're building, like, all HP or Arcana. And HP doesn't combine with damage, like, almost ever. Um, all the hybrid items are, like, armor and damage, not HP and damage. Um, except for maybe, like, Mantle Raw, but that's about it. So, um, basically, this helps with him if he has Mantle Raw, but that was something he was doing already. Um, this is, like, barely a big deal at all. Um... Unstoppable, uh, the damage is like almost negligible early, and it's less late. Um, the cooldown is very very nice. So this is very very nice because uh, you're you always want to have unstoppable off cooldown so you can have the double stun between swagger and unstoppable. <clears throat> so that's nice. Um, having it be seconds six seconds late is fine because usually you can, if you have even just one cooldown um, item, you can always have uh, unstoppable off cooldown. Uh, if you wait the full duration of using the enhanced auto attack afterward, 
Um, oh yeah, this wasn't in the freaking patch notes. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm complaining about the uh, the patch notes writers, but they t this this part literally wasn't in the patch notes. The fact that it, was, it went from 115 to 120, I'd actually like go check two different servers. Anyway, uh, you can tell I'm flustered. <clears throat> so uh, ability two swagger. This feels very nice. Uh, this this I've always complained about the cast time of swagger it was extremely long and you a lot of times you would just die before you got it off if you just want to get one last stun off for your team before you die or if you want to get it off before you yourself get stunned, which happened quite a bit so uh this feels pretty nice uh very very welcome um in exchange however uh the physical damage is even it's basically almost dead even even in the beginning and uh in the late game it's less uh, because <clears throat> this scaled to more, almost no matter what your build was. So it's going to be less damage in the late game, even in the early game, but in return, you have a faster cast time, which can use to stun people. So basically, they're turning him into like an HP stacking stun bot. Uh, finally, Walking Tall used to be that you could uh, heal to um, up to 6%, but now that healing limit is removed, so you can, <laughs> if you're healing on the entire team, you're basically like, it's impossible for you to die. Uh, it's, I would say it's even more healing than something like a Yabaneth. Like, it's ridiculous how much you'd heal. But the problem is, is that you can only stun someone so many times with your ultimate because it's very, it's random because of the gut punch passive. And they're not always just going to be there attacking you. He basically kind of turns into, you know, another version of Toro. Where, yeah, he's tanky, yeah, he's unstoppable if he's using Walking Tall and five heroes, but if they just ignore him and attack everyone else, um, he's not the greatest at saving allies. Yeah, he can stun them, but he's much better at uh, setting up kills. And, uh, anyway, the point is, these are definitely, like, all put together, it's definitely a buff, but he's still not going to be great, um, unfortunately. <clears throat> so, I gave him a two. It's It's definitely, like... It's, you'll feel the buff, but it's not going to be enough, in my opinion. Uh, Lumber, this is pretty simple. Um, it used to reduce the attack damage and ability power of the enemies by 15 to 25%, and now it just reduces the enemy damage output. So this is very similar to something like, you know, when Xanus, or the old Xanus, when he uses ult, or like uh, the current um, Tide Colors Mark, or like there's a couple other abilities that uh, reduce the damage dealt to you. But this is the only one that re reduces the enemy damage to everyone. Um, and basically, everyone scales to a different amount. Like, some people have more base damage, some people scale more. Um, like, for instance, in the early game, this does almost literally nothing to a mage because all their damage in the early game is based off of base damage and not off of AP because they have no AP at all. Uh, even if you, even if you have Icon, it's usually based on, or you, you get a lot of uh, magic pierce rather than having the actual uh, ability power. So this does extremely little to mages in the early game. Um, and again, there's just a lot of uh, abilities that are very, they're very variant, um, very variable. Uh, depending on how they scale so it used to be this used to be extremely inconsistent like to some heroes it was devastating to some heroes it like did nothing at all because of the way their ability scaled now everything's all nice and good so i didn't want to go through every single hero and see how their ability scale and see if this or and like kind of weight the meta heroes more than the less meta heroes and see how much of a a buff it was um it's more consistent that's a good thing i always kind of want to give him like a, a one or a two just because it is kind of a buff just to know what you're capable of doing um and know that your ability is going to be consistent but regardless it was a, a change that needed to be made um and i'm glad they did it Okay, moving on to Errol. Uh, Errol's been out on other servers for a little bit now. Uh, just came out recently on the 1010 servers. Um, I've heard that he's not as good on the other servers, but I mean, I have really no like personal evidence. Uh, and he hasn't been played in pro matches. So I don't have that as a reference either. So I'm kind of in, a little bit in the dark. But he got a tiny buff on his first ability uh, with the cooldown there. And now his uh, second ability, um, if you don't know, his second ability, he kind of jumps up in the air um, and slams. And if you have five stacks, then you stun people. And then it, it gives you this extra goodies as well. Um, and I would imagine that when you jump in the air and you get stunned, and not only do you get stunned, but you are unable to stun the person back, 
uh, that can be a pretty big game changer. So it seems like a very small change, but I can see a case where that was this can be game changing, right? This like basically he 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 was completely messed up by people stunning him, and it was he could completely like lose the game based on that because you know getting yourself stunned, getting like losing all these benefits, and on on top of that not being able to stun. Uh, your opponent's in the air for an entire second, um, and, and it's a pretty wide, like, range. It's it's long. It's, like, not that thin either. It's, like, a big plank of stun. So being able to get that off might be a game changer. I gave him a 2 just to be safe, but it very well could be a 3, even though it doesn't seem like that big of a change. Moving on to Quillen. Um... So, they nerfed him last patch. Like, people might be complaining, like, why did they give Quillen a buff? Basically, they're, this is, like, in between the uh, power level of one patch ago and two patches ago. <laughs> so, uh, two patches ago, his numbers were 175 to 300 plus 55%. Then they nerfed the base damage and the scaling from 55 to 45 now they reverted uh, the base damage, and then they put it from 45 to 50. So he, if you compare it to two batches ago, all that happened was his additional AD scaling went from 55 to 50. That's all that happened. Um, in the end, I gave him a 1, because if you combine all of these numbers, it's like, okay, he gets 15, and then... This is based on additional damage, so even if he has, like, you know, um, what does he build again? He builds Clavis, uh, and he builds, uh, what, like, maybe Fenrir or something like that? So, like, if you if you add all to, uh, together, you know, maybe it's, like, the mid to late game, he has, like, 300 extra damage, 300 times 5%, um, or sorry, let's just do 400 because it's easier to do math on that one. So, 400 times 5%. Uh, would be 20 extra damage, or 20 different, I mean. So 20, and then plus 15, um, that's 35, multiplied by 2, it's 70, and then you crit, I guess it might be a 140 damage difference, but that's including both mutilates and, and assuming that you get crits on both of them. I don't know if 140, diff 140 damage is going to be the difference between life and death for you know, Squishy, even, even for Squishies who have, you know, several thousands of health so um i don't know i gave him a one <laughs> it was like it was like it's like a slight buff but i don't i don't think people are gonna notice the difference all that much and that's by the way all those like the 140s even talking about like a, a a build that's very much developed that's like when you have essentially four completed tier three items and boots so yeah anyway Moving on, uh, Varus is another hero that they, <laughs> in the developer's notes, they said that um, they didn't really fully take into consideration the impact of fixing the fact that she couldn't get her uh, healing reduced by things like Curse of Death and Tome of the Reaper. And they also said they that they, they uh, didn't fully think about the change to Mental or Raw, which... Um, like theoretically, she got hurt by that. I don't, I don't know. I mean, first of all, like she builds tanky anyway, so building like HP versus building like damage is kind of like the same thing for her. Um, but aside from that, she literally operates outside of the range of mental or raw, so she's anti synergistic with it. I don't know. I was, I just, just, just sigh, guys. Just, uh, just sigh. Um. Anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, they increased the damage on Bloody Kiss, uh, or at least the scaling, or scaling per level, I should say. Um, and this used, this number used to be 320, um, and it was like 30 per level? Yeah, 30, 320 and like 30 per level, something like that. Um, and then... Something like that. Anyway, the, the point is, the point is, it used to go from 320 to 600, um, and now it goes from 250 to 8, 810. So even compared to the old version, it's still, like, less damage early, but a lot more damage late. And remember, this is, like, per hero. 
So not only is she getting this, but she's also getting the extra healing from it as well. And remember, the healing went from um, 12 to 120% to 8 to 80 early game and 15 to 150 late. So she gets even more healing from that. So she's uh, she's kind of a beast late game. She might be like unstoppable late game, but that she's also like very much hurt in the early game um, still. It's kind of like the same situation in the early game. But, again, she'll be an absolute beast in that late game. Um, this is obviously a straight-up uh, buff from the previous batch as far as this one is concerned. Um, uh, so it used to be, obviously, 250 plus 25 times uh, 14. If you wanted uh, to um, calculate the level 15 value, and obviously, I've already done this to, uh, for this side to show us eighteen ten or eight ten. Okay, I've been talking for a while. You can you can hear my brain like halting to a stop. <clears throat> um, her ultimate. So this is part of the kind of extra stuff on her ability. If you take a look at her ability, it says she, she does this and this and this and this when she does venom, and also she gets you know attack speed increase and uh, and you know. Uh, armor pierce increase and attack damage increase and this is one of the things that they nerfed pretty heavily this used to be previously like 150 and then like 250 and like 320 or something like that um but in this case they only increase it by 30 each and the, the big deal here is that other than this number right here it's not going to retroactively increase the damage of venom itself um if you haven't watched my veteran's guide basically uh every time or when you use Venom, the extra attack damage that you gain from using Venom is retroactively added to the damage that Venom does, um, because it's based on like your attack, like every every uh, one percent of uh, your attack damage adds to the percent of true damage that it does. So, because they round down, um, this this middle number here is the only one that increases your Venom damage by. An extra one percent. These ones you have to actually build some damage yourself um, in order for those to deal extra damage with venom. Um, and Varus doesn't usually build all that much attack damage, so it is kind of a big deal that it doesn't reach the threshold. So uh, they put that back. <clears throat> the this this change um, this two point five that it gave her is almost exclusively based on. The da extra damage from Buddy Kiss. She's going to be an absolute beast in the late game. She's going to be healing more. She's going to be do doing more damage. And she's not gonna. She's gonna be able to build even more uh, tanky than ever and still deal the damage. Okay, <laughs> almost there. Murad. Um, Murad. I'll be showing a clip while I'm playing this, basically, or while I'm talking about this. Uh, there was a bug. <laughs> so, um, if you've ever played Murad uh, or you watch a streamer play Murad or something, uh, you have to aim Thorn of Times indicator at the edge, or else it won't damage them. And people have always just thought that was part of the ability. Like, it only does damage at the edge of the arrow. But apparently that's that's been a bug this entire time. <laughs> apparently that's that's always just been a bug. And you're supposed to be able to damage someone at the beginning of Thorn of Time as well. Which is funny. Um, so they fixed that. And because they fixed that, they had to kind of nerf him somewhere else. They nerfed his temporal turbo damage. Um... The entire damage is nerfed by 50 uh, slash 100 slash 150 if you hit all five strikes. So it's really not that big of a deal. Like even if you even if you completely hit all five, um, and it's late game, you're only missing out on 150. Uh, if you consider how much it scales off of AD and how much AD he has in the first place, he's doing thousands and thousands of damage. Uh, that he's not going to miss this all that much. Um, overall, I think it's a slight buff. Um, and if you're a newer, newer Murad, this is going to be very, very helpful. You're not going to randomly miss targets with your Thorn of Time because you don't know how to aim the ability and you, you know, because it wasn't intuitive earlier. Um, and also, even for experienced Murads, everyone gets caught out every once in a while. Like, obviously, you want to Thorn of Time in, you know, dash, dash, and then teleport back. But sometimes you get caught, sometimes you're fighting someone. Um, and you need to be able to run away. And being able to stun someone as you dash away is actually, um, it's not a small deal. Uh, or it's not an insignificant deal, I should say. So, in the end, I think it's actually a buff. People are saying, oh no, Murad got nerfed, his damage. Like, no, the, the bug fix is, is a pretty 
I, I think it, I think the bug fix actually over. Um, I can't do English right now. It's it's better than it's a more of a positive that the uh, the the damage nerf is negative. Anyway, let's move on before I can't English any longer. Okay, uh, so in the previous patch, Necroth, this extra twenty percent um, AD couldn't crit, and now they're just like skirt. Let's just get rid of it. Uh, Necroth has is like one of the top assassins, probably the top like quick mobile burst assassin at the moment. I would say, um, and the empowered auto from Death Sentence is actually like when when you first. Pick up Necroth, and you look at his abilities. You don't, or you're um, even when you're playing against him, you don't really think of the enhanced auto from Death Sentence as being a big deal. But for the Necroth experts out there, it definitely is a massive deal. First of all, it's your main damage against towers. You Death Sentence in, uh, you auto the tower, and it gets chunked completely down. And before they can even do anything, you're out of there, or you just you know you finish finish it off. Um, people. The Necroth experts actually know exactly like how long the enhanced auto attack timer is, so you can use your one, or you can use your death sentence and then use your one and then one again, and your your enhanced auto is still up, and then you use that to um, you know damage someone pretty heavily. Uh, basically, this is a big part of his um, kit, and uh, reducing damage is you know it makes it makes a reasonable amount of difference. Um, also, for people who are playing Necroth, they know that like, the range on Death Sentence is, or the auto, the increased auto, uh, the enhanced auto, I should say, is massive. Um, you can actually, if you're a really good Necroth jungler, you can be on the other side of a wall from a monster and use the enhanced Death Sentence and damage them. Like, it is, the, the range is just extremely wide and, ex and way, like, it goes way longer than you would, uh, you would initially imagine. Okay, uh, next, Hayate. Um, so, Shuriken, <clears throat> uh, it used to deal 20% damage uh, less when, after it passed through a non-hero enemy unit. Um, now it does 30% less. There is a little bit of confusion because in the English ability description, it said um, deal 20% less damage up to 40%, which very much makes it seem like it it's capped at 40% less damage. But in fact, it, the cap was and still is 60% less damage, um, or in other words, 40% of the total damage. Uh, so now you hit the cap after two units rather than three. Before the cap like wasn't even really applicable. Um, I guess it was only applicable when it hit heroes at the edge of it. Um, but it wasn't applicable if you're hitting like you know hero if you're hitting uh, minions themselves and just trying to clear the wave because you very rarely come across uh, a minion wave that has more than three in it so yeah th this is a this it seems like less of a nerf than it is i went and tested it and you, you do so little damage to the back minion that it's kind it's a sm it's, it's something it's something it's, it makes it quite a bit harder to clear the wave and every single second counts when you're trying to farm up early uh slash you know rotate around, along the map so I think it's, even though it doesn't seem like a big deal, because most people are, are focused on the amount of damage that Hayate does uh, to heroes, it does mess with his farming. It messes with his rotations early. Um, so, yeah. I'll talk about my grade in a second. They also increased the cooldown of Kune Blitz, which is important, because early game, it's, it's very versatile. You can use it as a second dash to get away or to jump on someone. Um, not having it always off cooldown is is kind of a big deal, but he does get the same kind of scaling that uh, toward the end of the game because the uh, cooldown at the end of the game is the exact same. So uh, all that put together, I gave him a minus one point five. Uh, I was thinking about minus one, but it is it seems like it wouldn't be that big of a nerf, and it really isn't. But um, it's I think it's slightly uh, more of a nerf than people would imagine. <clears throat> okay, last thing, Violet. Uh, Violet got a bunch of weird stuff happen to her. So, um, they increase our attack range by a tiny, tiny amount, like 25 units is like, <laughs> it's, it's like, I can't even, it's, it's a quarter of a step. Like you can't even, I can't even like show you while like on like a map, like how big 0.2 or 25 units is. Uh, but in any case, uh, her passive has always been like a non-passive for a long time now, but, um, 
instead of only being reduced by normal attacks, uh, now every single ability reduces the passive, which is nice, especially if you hit multiple heroes with fire in a hole or concussive rounds. Um, but in exchange, they reduce the damage of tactical fire by not an insignificant amount, especially in the late game. Uh, they decrease the range. This is... You can still outrange towers, which is important, um, but obviously every little amount that you're closer to your enemy is, uh, is you know, fraught with peril if you are violent. Um, but uh, in exchange for that, they gave her a lot um, lower mana cost, which is important for, in particular, the early stages of the game because, I mean, I'd imagine that they want to see her more in the side lane and less in the jungle. And if you're not in the jungle, then I don't know if you still need it, but you needed to have Pendant of Faith in order to stay in lane, or else you're always constantly going back to base. Um, so reducing the mana cooldown, reducing the mana cost is is relevant for her. Um, and then they reduce the uh, cooldown of fire in a hole, uh, which you know in a way kind of indirectly reduces the cooldown of tactical fire because now you can reduce the, use that to reduce the cooldown with reload. Um, so. Overall, I'm not really sure how this is going to affect her. Um, it makes it so that she has to kind of get in the thick of fights a little bit more uh, and make sure that she hits her fire in the hole, make sure she hits her concussor rounds to, so that she can get more uh, tactical fires off. Um, that said, she can get more of them off in the early game, um, but then they're just not as strong and they're not as long, so people can kind of jump on her, but she does have greater attack range to, to use tactical fire. Um, in the developer's notes, they specifically mentioned they, they don't want to make her a tactical firebot. They want to, you know, encourage her to use her other abilities. Um, now, in previous patches, they buffed her other abilities, which made it so that they were very complementary to tactical fire. But um, now she's going to have to rely on them a little bit more uh, in order to be effective. And even though she was a tactical fire bot, that's kind of what made her good in the first place. So every it, you can make the argument that every inch you push her away from being a tactical fire bot uh, is a direction that you're pushing her toward being more irrelevant. Um, in the end, they're not the biggest nerfs or buffs here or there, and they do more or less uh, cancel each other out. So I gave her a zero. Um, this is one where I actually am curious to see and what people think about that, particularly people who play Violet like constantly, uh, whether they think that's this is a good change, whether this is a bad change, or if they agree with me that it's pretty much neutral. Okay, I've done a lot of talking. <clears throat> I went long enough on Fennec. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys go to d2aov.com, and hopefully you guys subscribe and click the bell for more videos. Thanks guys for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.